everyone and welcome back to another episode of Vintage Indie. I have spent the last week challenging myself to finish mending every last piece of vintage that has sat in my to be mended vintage pile uh, as a challenge to see myself into the new year with a clean slate so that I can start all these new projects that I have planned and share those with you and I'm very excited but because that video is taking me so long to edit down and it's going to be quite a juicy meaty video I just wanted to share a little taster of that uh, with one of the smaller projects that I managed to do but I'm really excited because I'm planning on wearing this specific item to my family Christmas so without further ado let me share with you this little project. And here she is folks, the dress we are going to be mending today. It's somewhat difficult to actually figure out the age of this dress, but I'm thinking from the general cut of the bodice, the skirt length and the metal tooth zipper that it's probably from the late 50s, maybe the early 60s. Unfortunately, because this fabric is now at least 40 or 50 years old, the fabric has become quite easy to tear. It's really delicate. When the dress arrived, it had tears around the lower back of the arm's eye, which is a natural place of tension for dresses with this kind of sleeve design. The aim today is to reinforce that area as much as I can. So the first step of that is to choose a thread that matches the sleeves. After eyeballing it somewhat and choosing a couple of different threads that I thought would have similar tones, I put the dress and the threads side by side to compare. Ultimately, I thought that the darker color would be more suitable and blend a little bit more unobtrusively with the dress. Let me know in the comments which of the threads you would have chosen. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Given my sewing machine's rather gung-ho approach of chew up fabric first, ask questions later, I thought that this project would be best suited to a little bit of hand sewing. I've also come to the conclusion that trying to thread a needle while on camera is the equivalent of trying to reverse parallel park during one's first driver's test. It is almost impossible and I was inordinately pleased when I got it almost the first go. I really can't begin to stress the delicacy of this specific sheer fabric. Even just the slightest of touch would cause the fabric to fray, let alone a bit of tension. So in order to try and prepare it for a bit of mending, I did try to anchor my stitches to the seam line first and foremost. So I started from the base of the tear that was about an inch from the start of the arm's eye in the lower seam line and I worked my way up from there towards the arm's eye first. Once I reached the arm's eye, I made sure to really double down on anchoring it in place and really stitched quite uh, thoroughly into that arm size base. Because it has that lovely buildup of fabric there, there are two or three layers of fabric there. It had a lot more to anchor to and it was easier to stabilize that fabric there. I strongly suspect that this dress was handmade rather than store-bought as there are no signs of shop labels anywhere inside of it and the seams are not overlocked on any of the internal elements of the garment but they're actually left raw. This lack of overlocking is not an indication in itself especially with vintage clothing but in combination with the suspected time period of the dress it does lend itself to this theory. I can't help but wonder about who made this dress in the first place. Was it someone's mother or aunt, perhaps, who had prepared it for a teenage daughter or a niece? Or was it perhaps a young woman excited to show off her sewing prowess? Though it was common practice in the early decades of the 20th century for young men to perform all sorts of textile hobbies, such as embroidery and knitting, I've seen for myself firsthand some examples of their handiwork done in convalescent homes during World War I. But by the 50s, gender division lines were being firmly reinstated in old and new ways entirely. Sewing for pleasure or personal purpose had begun to fall out of the public's eye as a hobby for men to practice and back into the realm of the homemaker, which is why I make the assumption that it was probably a lady seamstress on this occasion. Regardless of who made it though, I can't help but be aware of the love and the care that went into this garment. Someone clearly wanted to make the wearer feel special from the careful selection of fabrics to the clean stitch lines in the interior of the dress. 
This was a dress for special occasions, and a dress for special occasions it shall continue to be. To protect the arm's eye from further wear and tear, I ran a quick whip stitch along the raw edge. This put my thread closest to the other end of the tear, and after some messing about in consideration of my own, I decided that the stakes were too high to just wing it like I usually would, and I went in search of a pin to realign the edges of the tear as closely as I could. I'm so glad that I did as well. I'm sure I would not have gotten it as well aligned as I did had I not had that pin there to stabilize the fabric. I think it's important to note that in this fix, I tried to keep the sheer on sheer fabric stitches to an absolute minimum. Given the fabric's delicacy and tendency to fray, every stitch between the two sides of the tear ran the risk of pulling clean through and causing further damage. As soon as I was clear of the sleeve part of the tear and within a switchable reach to the arm's eye, I was putting stitches straight through and into that instead. The more there is for that fabric to be anchored to, the better the structure and the support will be, and the more likely the sleeve will be able to weather another decade, at the very least. There was no chance of these stitches being truly invisible either, but since the placement of the tear is relatively unobtrusive, I think I'll be able to make it work for the most part. Of course, no sewing project on a hot summer's day is complete without the plaintive cries of a small creature. So please enjoy, in between all of the rest of the sewing, the dulcet tones of the resident baby, Chester. Yeah? What's going on? after a harrowing campaign against this general injustice, and after I had finished working on this sleeve, Chester did finally get his wish. He was allowed to go on a guided walk through the garden to chew on some grass and generally cosplay as the wild panther that he firmly believes he is. Alas, he is only a large baby, but it is important to support his dreams. With the sleeve mending complete, I decided to undergo the harrowing and white knuckled ordeal of attempting to iron this fabric. Given its delicacy, I was absolutely terrified of accidentally scorching a hole in it. So I didn't actually film this process lest I accidentally psych myself out of doing it right due to the fact that I felt like I had an audience. So instead, you will just have to picture me with my iron stressfully setting it to the lowest setting and then pressing it really, really quickly to areas that were unobtrusive to see if I was going to end up accidentally scorching straight through the fabric. But I managed to iron down flat the inner collar lining that had risen. It's odd that they lined it with that sheer fabric. Again, I think that lends credence to the home sewn theory. Uh, but overall, I managed to get it to press down quite neatly and it, the dress was ready for a final try on. What's the matter, sweet boy? Oh wow, that was a good one. Good whale. You want to go outside, don't you? You want to go for a little walk? Hmm? You might have to give me five minutes, okay? I've just got to finish this, okay? And then we'll go outside, yeah? And then we'll go outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, darling, it's all right. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right, two seconds. Truly 
Visually, I am really pleased with how this has come out. I do worry that the other side of the sleeve will end up tearing almost immediately as well, despite the fact that it's held up so far. So I will be trying out the dress before I wear it to the big Christmas event. I'm just really pleased that this has turned out so well and that I'm finally able to wear this piece. Keep your eye out for the next video, which is going to be a mega, mega vintage mending compilation. And thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. This has been the Vintage Indie. We'll see you next time.